you've been consistent from day one in support of Julian Assange. You host a show called Assange Countdown to Freedom. Uh, you, you've you been in touch with Julian. He, you actually interviewed him on that show right. uh, early on, right? And yeah, since back in 2016, 2017 yeah. twice, and then he got locked up. I The second time I interviewed him, that's how Assange Countdown to Freedom came into being. It was April uh, 11, 2000. I got to make this point, 2017, because he had done a show that's on WBAI uh, in the morning, but it's also its own show, uh, Democracy Now!, early on uh, April 10th, uh, 2017, and he got ambushed. I mean, totally ambushed uh, by uh, by Amy Goodman and uh, who was it? Juan Gonzalez and this character by the name of Alan Nairn. Alan Nairn, who's a who's a great journalist, has yes. done a lot of really important stuff. But yeah, that yeah, that, that interview was it, it was an ambush. It was. was. Well, you take a look at it, and they haven't apologized for that. They no, need let's to make let's take a look at that, Randy, and, and then like, we're gonna get. Let's get your comments. Yeah. Uh, after we take a look at this, as soon as I'm able to bring it up. Um, yeah, that well, was, this is, this is a well, part one. Up. They need to make a public apology for this. They have to atone for it. They can't just like, it didn't happen. It happened. It happened. Okay, well, th these are some highlights I pulled right before this live stream because I wanted to discuss this because Amy is moderating uh, the Belmarsh Tribunal despite having done this. And this was just utterly disgusting. But of a part with what democracy has become. Mitchell, here democracy on now democracy has become. Now, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, in October, The Intercept published a conversation between Intercept. Glenn Greenwald and Naomi Klein about WikiLeaks' decision to disclose thousands of John Podesta's personal emails. This is part of what Naomi Klein said. I would add, it's not just that they didn't curate it um, and just dumped it all, right? They, they, they are dumping it. But they are they're, they are um, doling out the dumps, right? They're um, dumping it and doling it out, right? Clearly to maximize damage, right? So they're not just saying, right? "Hey, information wants yeah. to be free. Here's everything we have." Journalists have a field day, go through it, right? Um, right. You know, they're very no, clearly right. looking for media attention. Um, you can tell that just by looking at the WikiLeaks, you know, Twitter feed, um, and you know, timing it, you know, right before the debate. That was Naomi Klein in October. Uh, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, your, your response to some of her remarks. Well, I, I think it's a bit rich for Naomi Klein, who's a very wealthy woman uh, sitting up there in Canada, uh, to be uh, accusing a political prisoner who's been detained uh, for the last seven years without charge in violation of two UN rulings uh, without getting her facts straight. My view of this is that uh, this is Alan during Nairn. the campaign, WikiLeaks um, often suggested that Trump would be um, less dangerous than uh, than Clinton. Um, no, we didn't. Uh, I think you did. Uh, no, we I didn't. Think, I think that concept is uh, wildly, gruesomely uh, mistaken. There's There was the argument, well, it's, well, just, that, it's, that's fine. it's, it's fine for you to say that, but you should understand that no, he didn't. Uh, however, I would note that the Trump campaign thought that WikiLeaks was on their side. Now, the idea that <laughs> Mr. Assange yeah. just suggested that Trump and Quint Clinton were equally dangerous, two different deadly diseases, I think is wildly and gruesomely uh, mistaken. Wildly and gruesomely. He likes well, to say wildly and gruesomely. And, you know, he did not know, because I spoke to him that night, and he asked me to do the show the next day. And he did the show the next day. Hence, that's how Assange Countdown to Freedom started. He and John Pilger on the next day. Uh, and because he was so unsettled by that attack, the three of them, you know, they were supposed to talk about whatever the new uh, revelations were. I think it was Vault 7, uh, but uh, they didn't. They went right. Vault 7 had been released and they couldn't talk about that. And then three yeah. days later, you got uh, you have Pompeo four days later coming out. I guess he felt it, it was OK since the putative left is uh, is attacking Julian Assange. We may as well call him a hostile uh, intelligence force or whatever he called them. So that was a, a very bad move by them. And I urge the three of them to make a public apology right now because they haven't atoned for it. You just can't act like it didn't happen because it did a lot of damage. Aaron, wasn't there a component of that interview where 
they started to challenge Julian Assange on being essentially in league with or colluding with Russia. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't know if it was in that interview, but there's definitely one interview where, yeah, I don't think Alan Nairn was there for that. But I remember this where there was, you know, Adam Schiff was spreading all these this innuendo about uh, uh, WikiLeaks and Assange colluding with the Trump campaign and uh, Randy Credico, our guest, being right. the back channel somehow. Right. All this all this ridiculous stuff. And um, I, I remember Democracy Now! basically parroting that, taking it seriously as if it actually might be true. And repeatedly pressing Julian Assange on it. And at some point he says, you know, I don't have time for this. This is just really stupid. And you're I'm sorry to he Julian Assange said to Amy on air, he said, I'm sorry to see that you're falling for this. Because Yeah, he said that you're he says, I can't believe you're buying into this. Yeah, and yeah. she says, buying into it, buying into it, Julian, we've got evidence. I mean, you know, you of course yeah. have debunked all of this stuff. I was never back channel. Roger Stone never had a back channel. Uh, you've made that clear a million times. You've debunked Russiagate uh, and the, the, the whole uh, idea that there was uh, some kind of collusion. And especially, the it's so ludicrous. Look, I mean, she should say, wait a second. Julian Assange, a journalist, has this hot story. And uh, just, uh, just a week before he's going to release it, uh, he's going to give it to Roger Stone uh, to have it, and Roger Stone is going to sit on it. I mean, it, I mean, the, the it's idea, so dumb. And, it's, but amazingly, Randy, amazingly, I mean, uh, democracy. Now, I mean, this is an example of, of where I think democracy now's editorial standards have fallen on some key issues, not all of them, but on some key issues. And this is a good example. A few years later, in 2019, they brought on the you know their top guest on Russia Gate was Marcy Wheeler, who is just a who was a leading. Oh, uh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, no. Yes, she was the she was their top guest on Russiagate, and uh, she's a just unhinged conspiracy theorist. A nutcase. Uh, she's yeah. a complete nutcase. Yeah. Well, she's the, I've had yeah. so many conversations with her. She actually believes all of this stuff that she does. does. And so she came on Democracy Now to make the case that yes, Roger Stone did have advanced knowledge of WikiLeaks releases, and basically making the case that there was a back channel between uh, Roger Stone, WikiLeaks and the Trump campaign. And this was aired uncritically on democracy now of all places. And so now, I mean, now that Julian Assange is being persecuted, um, they've, I think they've wised up and now they're covering his story more. And Amy Goodman's there moderating the Belmarsh tribunal today, but it's an example of how, um, at, at times when it mattered, so many people that, you know, progressives have counted on to deliver the news factually and to have a backbone, have some critical thinking skills, have failed. And also at a time when it was so incentivized to sell out Julian Assange, because after uh, 2016, Julian Assange became public enemy number one, even more so than he was before in the eyes of, of liberals. And accordingly, there's been, you know, uh, there's that mention in that clip of The Intercept. They published all these stories disparaging Julian Assange, uh, pay, you know, uh, taking seriously the idea that he secretly conspired with Russia. And so there, there's been all these incentives in media to throw Julian under the bus. And Randy, you deserve a lot of credit because you have not jumped on to um, that bandwagon. You and Aaron have done incredible work on Syria, and you don't see that. I want to go back to democracy now. They don't uh, uh, do uh, balanced work, even if you want to call it balanced at all. They suck. Uh, they suck on, on Syria. Uh, they were not good. They have not been good on the Ukrainian stuff. They always have this one woman on talking about uh, atrocities committed by the Russians, but nothing about what uh, Ukrainians have done uh, to, uh, I don't know if they did anything about what this uh, foreign minister said uh, under, who just resigned uh, under Zelensky. If they did anything on that, they certainly. Uh, they don't, Randy, they don't do what they used to cover. So we used to, but back when I was there at Democracy Now, we covered the Maidan coup. We covered the role of the U.S. in, in placing weapon systems in Poland and Romania the expansion of NATO, all the provocations. If you go back and watch the old democracy now, you'll see better coverage of the current Ukraine war right. than the current yeah. democracy now. Because right. we used to have on people like Stephen F. Cohen before before he was banned as a guest on democracy now. After really? I really, oh yeah, he was banned from democracy now. That yes. is, was amazing. Yeah. I was banned so, from democracy now. John Pilger was banned from democracy now. He yeah. wrote me a long note about how he was banned because uh, one of their major funders from the Lannan Foundation didn't decided he didn't like him. Um, Are you and, serious? Yeah, yeah. They, I and they, not know they, that. John I know Pilgrim Soros is, is a funder, and I know that uh, the Ford Foundation and these. I don't know funders, if they're funders. But. I don't know who the funders are, but they get big money. Uh, they have a take a look at that studio. It's as uh, big as MSNBC. It uh, is. And, yeah. And, and yeah, so, I mean, I used to I used to hang out with all the Democracy Now crew, and they were like, 
my buddies in New York and they're like, what I look to is real grassroots journalists and something changed dramatically. Don't have time to go into all of it and speculate. I would just say, yeah, they, they did great work in the past. And now I would consider democracy now to be an, an enemy. I wouldn't approach them as a, uh, some no, I would not. friend of the anti-war movement that's that's gone astray. I consider Amy Goodman to be completely on the other side. She pushed the Syria dirty war. She pushed the white helmet psyop. She pushed every at every step of the way. She pushed Russiagate. She hosted freaking Kurt Eichenwald four times. Well, you got not once, not me. twice, not thrice, but four times. The biggest fraud of Russiagate. She sandbagged Julian Assange. She's now pushing the Ukraine proxy war narrative. She pushed the Uyghur genocide narrative to gin up a new cold war with China. It's nonstop on democracy now. It's not the exception to the rulers. It's an accessory to the ruling class. And there needs to be a su substantial challenge.